we can start sir, please uh, welcome good evening we are going to start today's program the first speaker will be dr rajiv jain he is a senior consultant health indian railways he has got almost 40 years of experience in health and administration he has several fellow awards in indian public health environment and occupational health he has presented several papers more than 145 scientific papers and he has got a fellowship and a scholarship by who nih and international society for priorities of in healthcare can i request now dr rajiv jain to please uh, take over the stage as usual Dr. Rajiv Jain, please. Shivang. Thank you so much. Good evening, friends. Uh, today is again Saturday, and we are starting the 50th episode of COVID-19 epidemiological updates. If you recollect, last year in August, we started this COVID-19 epid updates sessions on every Saturday, and how we are recording and or archiving. the evolution of covid-19 pandemic in india and the states of india and the districts of india as well as globally every saturday we've been doing this for the last now 49 weeks today is the 50th episode 50 i expect the pandemic would be over sooner than later but that does not seem to be happening we are getting into more sustained evolution of the pandemic as we are going along as you are seeing and as the data will show shortly we are also facing a new phase of the pandemic new phase in the evolution of the covid-19 virus the omicron phase so to say and the whole world is into delta and omicron virus infection so we begin with a short 30 second video welcoming 2022 and say goodbye to 2021 
So very happy new year 2022 to all the people who are watching live on Zoom and who shall be watching on YouTube. So today we start with a video as we usually do with the update from the World Health Organization, including the Director General WHO and the Chief Scientist WHO and the technical experts epidemiologists in the World Health Organization. So you will get an overview of what is the current situation uh, hello to globally. Watching us on WHO. This virus will continue to evolve and threaten our health system if we don't improve the collective response. Right now, Delta and Omicron are twin threats that are driving up cases to record numbers, which again is leading to spikes in hospitalizations and deaths. I'm highly concerned that Omicron being more transmissible, circulating at the same time as Delta, is leading to a tsunami of cases. We'll also not have a uh, caption. The pressure on health systems is not only because of new COVID-19 patients requiring hospitalization, but also a large number of health workers are getting sick themselves. The unvaccinated are many times more at risk of dying from either variant. Omicron is moving so quickly. In addition to vaccination, public health social measures are also needed to stem the wave of infection, protect health workers and systems, open up societies, and keep children in school. This briefing and transcript will be uh, posted. In the year ahead, I call for leaders of government and industry to walk the talk on vaccine equity, both by ensuring consistent supply and helping to get vaccinations actually into people. Chief Director for WHO Health Emergencies Program. This is the moment for leaders to banish the politics of populism and self-interest which are derailing the COVID-19 response and threaten to undermine the response to the inevitable next disease X. While 2021 has been hard, I ask everyone to make a New Year's resolution to get behind the campaign to vaccinate 70% by the middle of 2022. We have 185 days to the finish line of achieving 70% by the start of July 2022. And the clock starts now. If we drive this campaign together, we will all be in a much better place by this time next year. Uh, normally, we would do the questions and answers. In With regards to the pandemic, uh, we've been saying this for a very long time, the acute phase of the pandemic, the pandemic uh, that's been associated with the tragedy of death and hospitalizations, that can end in 2022. The virus itself is very unlikely to go away completely and will probably settle down into a pattern of transmission low level, causing occasional outbreaks in under-vaccinated uh, populations. Um, and we hope that that is the, the end game here. But uh, we're certainly not there yet. Uh, this is going to be a bumpy road on the way to uh, low levels of COVID. Any, anyone else trying, uh, wanting to, to? But I think the most important thing about, at this moment is we, we, we need to be careful about changing tactics and strategies immediately on the basis of what we're seeing in early Omicron data. Oh, it's, it's less severe. Maybe it's not. It's more transmissible. Maybe it is. But we have to wait and see if the vaccines work or they don't work. We have to wait and see. Um, and I think it would be advisable at this point if we don't see huge shifts, huge moves in reducing uh, control measures for, 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 uh, for COVID-19 purely on the basis of, of initial or preliminary studies. Omicron variant. I, I think the video is not the evidence or is the is just emerging with and the video. Very we shall wait still uh, for the connection to come back. But I think what we can what we say see today is that all of the lab studies are.
Is the video back? are still getting breakthrough infections with Omicron. And that's why the numbers that we're seeing around the world today are extremely high, because these infections are occurring in both the vaccinated and unvaccinated people. However, it appears that vaccines are proving to be still protective, because even though the numbers are going up exponentially in many countries, hospitalizations, and even within hospitalization, hospitalized people, the need for ventilation, the need for critical care, that doesn't seem to be going up proportionately. Um, Dr. Diaz, would you like to add something? It is too early right now, uh, and we still must be cautious when trying to ascertain the severity of Omicron virus uh, infection. Uh, we do know that there are some suggestions of the reduced hospitalization coming from some countries, as was already discussed. But we need to know also, of those hospitalized, how many are on oxygen therapy? How many are requiring intensive care or mechanical ventilation? And how many are dying? So we do need to get a better understanding of that spectrum of severe disease in patients infected with Omicron. So what, are we, what do we need? We need more data. We need robust analysis. And this is a call on countries that are experiencing co um, as we heard, the co-threat of, uh, co of Omicron and Delta. Thank you, Dr. Rayan, Dr. Diaz, Dr. Mahmoud. Well, you've heard how complex the situation and how complex the pandemic is at the moment. But what we need to do today and for the months to come is to have eternal vigilance. Eternal vigilance, that means we need to review the epidemiological situation because it is evolving faster than we think. Let's see the facts. Let's have the next slide, please. Global outbreak soars to record high. COVID-19 infections across the world have now soared to the worst levels ever recorded with the new Omicron variant, racing out of control, even as the WHO warned that the variant may yet over overwhelm healthcare systems. Highest weekly spike ever recorded. 65,6147 new cases reported in the world in the past week. That means 35% increase in the past seven days. In Europe, Omicron waves are towering above Delta. New COVID-19 cases per million population, you're seeing in the graph on the right top. And you are seeing how Denmark, Spain, France, and United Kingdom seem to be competing with each other where new COVID-19 cases per million are skyrocketing. They are highest ever in the pandemic in the past, but deaths are still low. If you see, there have been 57% decrease in the deaths, still much below the peak levels seen in early 2021. There is a positive sign. In preventing and hospitalizations. So the people who have yet to get vaccinated, they must get vaccinated at the earliest. And people who have already got vaccine, they need to understand that they need to go in for Boost dosage in India would be called retos. Let's see the next fact. Next slide, please. Yes. Arm um, and pandemic are two new vaccines, and one of the first successful antivirals. For the SARS-CoV-2 now have emergency use authorization in India. Here's what you need to know. There are two protein-based vaccines. One, Covovax, which is developed by a company of USA. Indian maker would be Serum Institute of India. And expected supply would be Serum Institute of India began production in June with a target monthly production of 150 million by March 2022. It has been tested in children? Yes, it has been tested in children, posted to children, each in the 12 to 17 and two to 12. 
efficacy is 90% against original failure. Second question is, developer is better college of medicine and biology. And Bill Peter Hotez said on Tuesday, the 50 million doses have been stockpiled. Tested in children? Not yet. Efficacy is 80 to 90% based on its on or protection coming by antibody levels. The antiviral pill is more new. Developer is mocked and ripped back by therapeutics. Take over eight pharma firms, including Dr. Reddy's, Cipla, and Sun, and applied to, they have applied to make generic versions. Expected supply would be unknown, but likely high number pills. Efficacy is 30% reduction in risk of hospital death in unvaccinated people. How it works? Molnupiravir mimics building blocks of RNA. Put it into population collapse. How manufacture the process in this the spike growth Uh, sir, there is some technical error. Dr. Rajiv will join shortly, sir. Oh, uh, sorry for the convenience. The connect got lost. But we, we go along uh, to understand how protein-based vaccines are manufactured. The genetic code of the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2 is red. The spike protein is the most common portion used in vaccines to train the body to recognize the SARS-CoV-2. This protein is what covers the virus, helping it to attach to human cells. Second step is genetic code is inserted into a cell manufacturing system. The cell manufacturing system is a platform on which the intended protein, in this case, the spike or the RBD portion of the spike grows. Covovax uses moth cells as a medium, while Corbivax uses yeast to cells. Replicas, this is the third step. Replicas of the spike protein are purified from the cell system. Then step four, combined with immune stimulating, stimulating adjuvants, these are turned into virus-like particles, that is VLP. Covovax does it by teetering the protein to nanoparticles, while Covovax coats it in a soluble globule. And the final step, that is step five, if the VLP is then used as the inoculation, once injected into the human body, cells read it and create antibodies as well as immune memory. So this is the technology and this is the manufacturing process, but slow, but effective. Let's look at the next slide and the next aspect of this pandemic. How COVID-19 has gripped India's major cities again. Nearly eight months have passed since India's brutal second wave of infections peaked in the country. But the emergence of Omicron, a new and highly transmissible variant of SARS-CoV-2 has led to a massive rise in infections the world over, overpowering all other variants at a blistering pace. Though the variant appears far less virulent than Delta, its ability to evade vaccines and its higher transmissibility have sparked concerns that it could drag the fight against the pandemic back several months. In the past few days, a minor change in trajectory of new infections has been visible across several major cities. This, coupled with the fast rising Omicron infections, has led some experts to speculate that this may become a steady stream of cases. But are cases rising everywhere? Or is this spike limited to only a handful of regions? And look at four charts that try to answer this question. Let's look at the first chart. 
Next slide, please. After months of decline, cases are rising. If you look at the uptick on the right extreme of the graph, you would understand what I'm trying to say, and it's rising faster than ever in the past. Next slide, please. Biggest spike by far visible in major cities. New COVID-19 cases in Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, Chennai, Pune, and Kolkata. And you see the rise. Delhi, 1,081% increase from 1st of December. Mumbai, 552% increase from 1st of December. Chennai, 36% increase from 1st of December. Bangalore, 47% increase from 1st of December. Pune, 15% increase from 1st of December. Kolkata, 8% increase from 1st of December. So we are seeing definitely a visible big spike in, by, by far the biggest spike, it is visible in major cities of India. Next slide. Urban centers are the main fuel in national tally. Share of six cities in the national COVID-19 tally has gone up from 11% on 1st of December to 30% on December 29. That's the way the tally or the rally of COVID cases is rising in India in urban centers today. Next slide. But numbers are rising outside these cities, albeit slowly. Seven day average of new cases in six cities and the rest of India. New cases in the rest of India is in blue and red is the new cases in six cities. So you can see it is rising at both the places. The rise in case rate in urban centers, however, is particularly worrying because if previous waves have been any indication, then a rapid rise in infections as being witnessed in cities right now cannot remain isolated for long. In both the first and second waves, cases were initially confined to metros, with cities such as Delhi, Mumbai, and Chennai becoming the early areas of concentration of infection. The trend of a handful of high population density hotspot regions emerging as first centers of infection, then a heavy and steady stream of cases from medium population regions has been identical in nearly every major country that has seen the outbreaks. So this is the lesson worth learning. Let's look at another, another aspect of this pandemic, understanding the key numbers behind India's new vaccination plan. India will start vaccinating children in the 15 to age, 18 age group from January 3, that is the next Monday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced on December 25, a precautionary third dose will also be given from January 10 to healthcare and frontline workers. And people over 60 with comorbidities, he, he said, those who got the second jab 39 weeks, roughly nine months ago, will be eligible for these precautionary doses. How many do doses will India require to inoculate the new cohorts? Will there be any shortage? Which countries are giving booster shots to most of their population? We answer these questions in four charts. Let, let's look at the first chart. How many people will the next phase of vaccinations cover? Healthcare and frontline workers, at least overall 28.8 doses will be required during next year. 60 years and above at most overall, 137.9 million doses additional doses will be required next year. And also all 15 to 18 age group population, 148.2 million additional doses will be required. So you can imagine how much will be the requirement. This translates into 240.7 million people or an additional requirement of some 314.8 million doses in 2022, since the children require two doses. This is likely and overestimate because not all above 60 years suffer from specified comorbidities. Let's look at the second chart. Demand from children will exceed that of senior citizens initially. Additional dose requirement in January as percent of doses given in recent months, September 21, 44, October 60.1, November 58.5, and December up to 27 December 56. 7.9. Assuming all eligible children receive their first jab in January, India 4.1 million 
significant number seen in comparison with the number of doses the country has administered every month. This is in addition to around 54.5 million people who will be eligible for second doses if we just take the 12 week gap. For around 90% of the people who receive the doses. Let's look at the third chart. Older people have more comorbidities, but make up small share. That the elderly are more vulnerable to coronavirus and should be given priority is a sound argument. Diabetes, asthma, heart disease, ailments, and cancer are less prevalent in younger people. The 2015-16 National Family Health Survey showed while it was limited to reproductive age of up to 49 years, the longitudinal aging study in India survey conducted in old age groups suggests even higher prevalence of such diseases in people aged 60 years and above. For instance, 35% of senior citizens reported at least one of three while only 22% of the 45 to 60 year, years old had such an ailment. And you can imagine the pressure on the doses that will be required to be given for people who are above 60 years and have comorbidities. You can imagine the load that would put on the demand for booster doses or the precautionary doses. Let's look at the fourth chart. India is already behind in booster coverage. And you are seeing in the graph share of given boosters. And each country you are seeing is a contribution. India is not the first country to announce booster doses for its population. In fact, the trend of booster shots is in keeping with the rich free bias in the progress of regular vaccine programs in the world. At least 92 countries have administered boosters according to our world in data, and not all of them are rich Western nations. The list includes India's neighbors, Sri Lanka, 15.7% and China, 8% and economic peers such as Brazil. If boosters are the only significant way of protection against the Omicron variant, surely everyone will first need to be fully vaccinated. There are significant gaps persisting there as well. As much as 47% of the 18 to 45 age group, 30% of the 45 to 60 age cohort, and these percentages are likely even worse in a large number of districts. In mid-December, the share of fully vaccinated adults was less than 50% in more than a third of India's districts. So that is the challenge that India faces. It's a, there are challenges which need to be addressed. We need to look at another aspect. Month of January, India will open booster shots for frontline workers and those above the age of 60 years with comorbidities. So booster gaps in recommendations vary depending on the country you are in. US, six months after two doses of mRNA vaccines, that is Pfizer and Moderna, and two months after the single shot of j, &J in Canada, three months after two doses of mRNA vaccine. In UK, it is three months after two doses of any vaccine. Singapore, five months after primary vaccination with any, nine months second dose of either Covishield or Covaxin. At this juncture, let's hear what our DG, ICMR, and Secretary of Health Research, Government of India, has to say on this aspect. Let's see the video, listen to it, and then proceed further. ...you of COVID immunity. First of all, how do we get it? how we have got it either after an infection or after a vaccination. So the question remains, how long does that last? And that is what we will put before you in a scientific perspective. Now we know the whole virus SARS-CoV infects an individual in natural settings. This virus elicits three kinds of responses. One is antibody mediated, the second is cell-mediated medi immunity, and then there is immunological memory. And measurement of antibody titer alone does not capture the entire protection. 
So that is very clear. However, it is well known, and we will be talking about some of that data, the durability of immunity post-infection persists for about nine months. So if you get an infection for nine months, you are generally protected in what is the evidence. The evidence is the following, and this is global evidence. Immunological memory for SARS-CoV lasts for more than eight months after natural infection. This is from USA, published in Science. Then there is antibody and cellular response more than nine months after infection from China. Then longitudinal investigations in USA of multiple studies have shown that the antibody responses persist for more than 13 months post-infection. And the systematic review of 10 studies from Israel, England, Denmark, USA, Austria, and Italy have that more than 90% reduction in reinfection up to 10 months. So you're protected for up to 10 months. That is the, so uh, eight to 10 months, eight to 13 months, that is the general, so, so that is why we like to say that up to nine months and take a slightly conservative estimate of that and that is. What is the evidence from India? There are three studies, two from ICMR and one from Bombay on 284 patients, on 755 patients, and 244, that it persists for up to eight months, seven months, and six months, and these are all published data from infection that occurred in 2020, 2021, and that has been followed up for eight or nine months, and, and that is where we stand. So 90% is at least up to eight months. Now this is the immunity that I talked about provided by a natural infection, lasting up to eight to 13 months, and, and most probably, so we've taken a conservative of nine months. Then vaccination can provide immunity, and majority of Indians have received either of the two vaccines. And we know the two vaccines, we will talk about them. Some vaccinated individuals had prior symptomatic infection, and some vaccinated individuals had prior asymptomatic infection. That is why if you look at the mm -hmm. Zero prevalence that was 67% in June, July, and uh, and in Delhi they'd come up to about 90%. So some of them were asymptomatic. So in essence, what is the summary of this point? I want to emphasize is that multiple exposure to the virus has virus antigen has happened, whether it be through the vaccine or through infection or through contact, and the durability of this immunity also persists for up to or more than nine months. And what is the evidence that we have, scientific evidence, for this immunity to persist for up to nine months? There are global and Indian evidence. So there is a meta-regression analysis on uh, four WHO emergency licensed vaccines, and one of them was uh, AstraZeneca vaccine, that more than 90% uh, uh, against severe disease for more than six months in all ages across the board. This was a huge meta-regression. And more other important point is recovered and vaccinated, that is hybrid immunity, that is people who have recovered after an infection, infection and have been vaccinated or vaccinated and then also had disease and recovered. So that is called hybrid immunity. And those counts a slightly stronger response and last slightly longer. And this robust antibody retitis after second dose may be more than six months. That is published in a very important journal called The Nature. Now, what is the evidence from India? So we have three um, studies, and there are much. Uh, there are a few more. I've just taken out the three key ones. One is from Calcutta, the other is from Kerala, and the third is from Chennai. And they have looked at uh, presence of persistence of cell-mediated immunity is 10 months, both Covishield and Covaxin. This is from Calcutta after a vaccination alone. We do not know the infection status, whether they got asymptomatic, but what is the duration of persistence of cell-mediated immunity in vaccinated individuals is up to 10 months with both, either with Covishield or with Covaxin, and this is a st large study. The other is hybrid immunity with Covishield is stronger than only infection or vaccination. So. If you have had an infection and a vaccination, your immune response is more than only infection or only vaccination. So important thing is that vaccination is absolutely essential. 
And more, this is another study from Chennai, which is on healthcare workers, that more than 70% of 116, good concentration of both anti-S antibody and neutralizing antibody for more than six months following vaccination. So now coming to the vaccines that are being used in India. We know that there are two vaccines which are the main players of, one is the whole variant killed vaccine with an innovative adjuvant, that is the Covaxin. And the second is a viral vector-based subunit vaccine, that is Covishield. So th and vaccine recipients are vulnerable due to intense transmission dynamics. So the transmission dynamics expected, what have we are seeing in USA or in Europe are intense. And our one dose coverage is 90%, and two dose coverage, uh, I should stand corrected, is 63%. So that is also, that has happened as far as India is concerned. So this much vaccination has happened. We know the number of cases, we know the seroprevalence, that is also to be factored in. And the third point is that the transmission of Omicron is three times or four times more than the Delta variant also. So the that will also be exposing people for this. So next, so my last slide is, in terms of the precautionary dose, we have to remember one important point, and that is the most important point is that all COVID vaccines, whether it be from India, from Israel, from USA, from Europe, from UK, or, or China, all these vaccines are primarily disease modifying. They do not prevent infection. So they are not infection preventing. So precautionary dose is primarily so now we, we are we are now mitigate. clear by now. Why nine months? Why nine months is the gap that has been chosen in India? And there is a scientific basis. The DGI CMR has very clearly mentioned the need for this gap. Let's look at the next slide, please. Booster doses are a way to prime the immune system to fight against the pathogen after initial vaccination. Booster doses are routinely administered to prevent diseases such as polio, rabies, hepatitis, and common flu. COVID-19 vaccines were introduced almost a year ago. Data now shows that though the vaccines prevent severe illness, their effectiveness in preventing COVID-19 symptomatic infection reduces over time. Data from US Centers for Disease Control shows that the antibodies wane from six to nine months after two doses of vaccination. With fears around long COVID, boosters may help prevent infection. Which population group needs them? Though countries in the West have recommended boosters for all adult population, the evidence to use them is highly tilted towards the elderly population, those who are immunocompromised and frontline workers. The World Health Organization has also recommended boosters for those jabbed with the inactivated virus vaccines. That is vaccine platforms by companies such as Sinovac or Bharat Biotech. For the immune compromised and the elderly, the booster is a way to keep generating antibodies response. Boosters are for healthcare workers and ensure their protection and thus lower the burden on the healthcare system. Next slide. Can one be infected even after the boosters? We do not know. There is no evidence yet whether boosters completely prevent the infection. What they tend to do is to make the symptomatic infection milder over time. Boosters could also become ineffective with the emergence of new coronavirus variants. The scientific community is of the view that SARS-CoV-2 vaccines could become a yearly affair. Next slide. What are the other countries doing? While India has recommended boosters nine months after the second vaccination, the CDC recommends boosters six months after taking the two doses of the mRNA vaccine, that is Pfizer and Moderna, and two months after taking the one dose adenovirus vaccine, that is JNG. The UK recommends boosters after three months and Singapore after five months. Though India has not clarified about the nine months gap, there is some evidence that a longer interval between the first and second dose gives a stronger immune response. Can vaccines be mixed for boosters? Yes. Mixing of vaccine doses, also known as heterologous vaccination, is considered a better vaccination strategy from a scientific as well as logistical perspectives. Mixing doses of adenovirus vaccine with an mRNA vaccine can lead to longer resistance towards infection. 
the studies have shown india is in a unique position to test the benefits of heterologous vaccination as vaccine companies here are working on almost all platform trials for mixing covid shield and co vaccine are currently on and we shall know the results very soon in the first week of january let's look at another aspect of this pandemic next slide please are india's latest covid-19 vaccines more effective india has one of the largest baskets of covid-19 vaccines in the world earlier this week the country approved two new vaccine candidates taking the total to eight and we have now covid shield astrazeneca serum institute of india covaxin bharat biotech sputnik v rdif dr reddies moderna cipla janssen single shot with biological e no trials in india then zykov d zydus cadilla covovax novavax serum institute of india and covivax biological e baylor college so this is the basket that we have next slide please how do covovax and covivax work both are based on the second generation platforms known as protein vaccine that are safer than the traditional platforms such as the inactivated whole cell ones protein based vaccines are built using specific particles of a virus that have the ability to generate an immune response known as antigens the antigens are combined with an adjuvant to trigger the immune response in covovax a plant based adjuvant known as saponin in com is combined with a protein of the first strain of sars cov 2 covivax uses particles from a receptor binding domain of the virus spike protein to trigger an immune response what is the dosage recommended both are approved as two dose vaccines within a span of one month these vaccines are not yet recommended for children the world health organization has recommended a third dose of covax for immunocompromised people and also recommends its use in pregnant women who scientific advisory group for vaccine eff effectiveness has noted that though there is no data for covax on pregnant women the past experience of using the protein based vaccine has been safe data for covivax is currently available only for adults detailed guidelines are awaiting however the firm has started a booster trial in india next slide please. what are the benefits of protein based jabs they tend to be safer as they do not use live or weakened virus particles that could lead to vaccine induced infection this platform dominates several new generation vaccines such as hepatitis b and hpv vaccines the high safety profile makes them suitable for immunocompromised people but they may not trigger a lasting immune response boosters are therefore required next slide please do these vaccines work against the variants novavax one of the firms behind covax said the third dose of the vaccine produced an increased immune response against omicron and also provided cross reactive immune response against variants such as delta it is now developing an omicron specific jab expected to go into production by january 2022 covivax does not have the data yet on omicron effectiveness but it triggers a better immune response against delta compared to covid shield with over 80% efficacy against symptomatic infection when will they be available for public though the two jabs have received emergency use authorization there is no announcement from the government on whether it will buy the vaccines to be used in the immunization program the companies have not made any announcements on whether they will sell these vaccines in the private market however as the government has announced boosters for frontline workers and those above 60 who are immunocompromised these vaccines could become possible booster shots so there is hope at the moment let's look at the data now the rapid surge in cases across india active cases are growing at 2.1% now in the new year please be responsible mask up and get vaccinated urgently next slide please daily cases are surging as you can see at the right side of the graph next slide please this is the situation today and you see the seven day average growth percentage in on the right side mizoram west bengal ladakh goa delhi maharashtra jharkhand gujarat kerala jnk andaman nicobar telangana are rising very very fast seven day average test positivity rate if you see mizoram 10% goa 4.6 kerala 4.4 west bengal 3.7 
Maharashtra 3.0, Nagaland 2.5. So these are the states where things are turning back to worse. Next slide, please. Massive jump in cases across several states. Delhi, Maharashtra, West Bengal, Jharkhand, Gujarat, Haryana, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, and it goes on. If you look at the graph of each state, these are large states. Next slide, please. New confirmed cases per million in small states and union territories. Look at Goa. You look at, uh, you, if you look at different states, we got small states, Mizoram, number of states where you see the uptick going up. Next slide, please. This is very important data, the district-wise data. Weekly district-wise positivity rates, more than 10%. Nine districts in India. And on the two uh, column that you are seeing, where percentage contribution of testing by rapid antigen test, and on the left, and percent contribution of testing by uh, RT-PCR is also listed. You see Kolkata, 17.88% positive, the highest amongst all the districts in India. And Mizoram have got six districts where it is more than 10%. And you look at the positivity rate, 16.8, 15.8, 14.9. Very high positivity rate in Mizoram. Jharkhand, Kodarma district has 11.28%. Arunachal, Namsai district has 13.64%. So nine districts at the moment, the last week, from 24 December, 30 December, have reported more than 10% positivity rates. And also see the states where districts where the contribution of rapid antigen test is very high. So they, they, the real rate may be much, much higher than what is shown here. Next slide, please. This is the list of districts, 15 districts in India, where the test positivity rate during the period 24 December to 30 December has been between 5% and 10%. And again, you see, West Bengal, Havla, 7.45%. Mizoram, two districts, Aizol and Saithal. Manipur, one district, Imphal West. Maharashtra, two districts, Mumbai and Mumbai suburban, 5.75 and 5.27 for the week. And it is rising very fast. Kerala, you see how many districts are positive, more than 5%. Thirunandapuram, Kottayam, Partham Teta, Iduki, Ernakulam, Kojikur, and Goa, North Goa is 6.21%. Arunachal, Lohit and Changlang, eight more than 5%, 8% and 7% you see. And also please note, substantial contribution, wherever districts is showing more contribution for rapid antigen test, they, the real rate may be much higher. Next slide. This is the count of the Omicron variant in India, 1431, 1431, today morning at 10 a.m. 454 by Maharashtra, 351 by Delhi, Tamil Nadu, 118, Gujarat, 115, and Kerala, 109. All have proven genomic analysis, more than 100 cases in these five states, Maharashtra, Delhi, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, and Kerala. So we need to be on extreme guard on this aspect. Next slide, please. This is the Southeast Asia region where we are seeing the trend is, has just started going up the entire Southeast Asia region. Next slide, please. This is the global graph where seven days, you are seeing the contribution now is substantially of Europe, the green one, and Americas, the yellow one. So they are facing the biggest brunt of COVID-19 pandemic, combination of Delta and Omicron. Next slide, please. This is the week on week. Week on week, 11% increase globally and 49,85,000 infections in the world, out of which 28,42,000 by Europe and 14,76,000 by Americas. So Europe and Americas are facing the real brunt and Americas shown 39% increase week on week. In terms of deaths, they were less deaths, but their deaths actually occurred in Africa. Week on week increase was 72%.
that mainly occurring in South Africa because of the Omicron and Delta variant combination. Next slide, please. This is the global graph of Americas, Europe, Southeast Asia, Eastern Mediterranean, and Western Pacific in Africa. You've seen the uptick in Africa, bottom right, blue color. And now it has started coming down. You look at Europe, the light green color on the right top, it's going up, up, and up. America is still going up, up, and up. And Western Pacific again started going up, the bottom left. So the global pandemic is still evolving very, very fast globally. Next slide, please. This is the top six countries in the entire pandemic graph. United States of America going up. India has just started going up again. Brazil is still not having uptake. United Kingdom is the in the eye of the pandemic. That is, it is going up extremely high levels ever during the pandemic. Russian Federation had faced, it is going down. Turkey is still again started going up. Next slide, please. This is the next six countries. France is still going very high. Every day, it is rising very, very fast. Germany has started coming down. Iran has started coming down. But Spain is still going up. Italy is still going up very sharply. And Argentina is going up very sharply. Next slide, please. These are the top 10 countries where cases newly reported in the last seven days. 15,46,330 cases, out of which 16,46,000 by USA and only last 24 hours, more than 5 lakh cases, 5 lakh 25,000 cases, highest ever in the pandemic till date. UK, 6 lakh 15,000 in one week, France, 6 lakh cases, Spain, 3 lakh 83,000, Italy, 3 lakh 20,000, Germany, 1 lakh 87,000, Russian Federation, 1 lakh 85,000, Turkey, 1 lakh 54,000, Vietnam, 1 lakh 9,000, and South Africa, 92,000. And what you see, India is not there. So you are seeing that the pandemic is dynamically traveling all across the world. And mainly it is now the Northern America and Europe. You're seeing number of countries, how they are suffering. Next slide, please. This is a ranking of countries in terms of deaths newly reported in the last seven days, 43,000 deaths, out of which 10,000 deaths occurred in United States of America, almost 11,000 deaths. Russian Federation, 6,700 deaths, Poland, 2,878 deaths, and India, here it is there, 2,267, Germany, 1895 deaths, Vietnam, 1591 deaths, Ukraine, 1503 deaths, France, Turkey, and Italy. So these are the countries where deaths have, have occurred in the last seven days, the top 10 countries. Next slide, please. This is the global graph of COVID-19 cases per one lakh population reported by the countries, and you are seeing the darkest brown is where the infection is northern america and entire europe and africa south africa and countries around south africa next slide this is the covid 19 deaths per one lakh population the highest concentration is the deep blue which is in europe next slide please this is the brief update on sars cov 2 omicron variant the overall risk related to the new variant of concern, Omicron remains very high. Consistent evidence shows that the Omicron variant has a growth advantage for the Delta variant with a doubling time of two to three days and rapid increases in the incidence of cases is seen in a number of countries, including those where the variant has become the dominant SARS-CoV-2 variant, such as the United Kingdom and the United States of America. However, a decline in the incidence of cases has now been observed in South Africa. The rapid growth rate is likely to be a combination of both immune evasion and intrinsic increased transmissibility of the Omicron variant. Early data from the United Kingdom, South Africa, and Denmark suggests there's a reduced risk of hospitalization for the Omicron compared to the Delta variant. However, further data are needed to understand the clinical markers of severity, including the use of oxygen, mechanical ventilation, and death, and how severity may be impacted by vaccination and or, or prior SARS-CoV-2 infection. It is also expected that corticosteroids and interleukin-6 receptor blockers will remain effective in the management of patients with severe disease. However, preliminary data suggests that monoclonal antibodies may be less able to 
to neutralize the Omicron variant. Reassuringly, preliminary data suggests testing using the either PCR or antigen-based rapid diagnostic tests, assays, does not appear to be impacted by the Omicron variant. So this is the overall view of, of the epidemiological situation of COVID-19 at the moment. Next slide, please. Attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity. I'm grateful for your generosity because you have given attention during this presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jain. You had a wonderful, as usual, weekly update. We don't have any queries in the chat box. We'll go to Dr. Parul Malhotra. Yes, madam. Yes, good evening, sir. Very good evening. Dr. Parul Malhotra has got experience in occupational health for eight years. Occupational health and well-being. She has got she, she has also got experience in uh, clinical cardiology and critical care management. She has done uh, MBBS from Rohtak. She has done AFIH and MBA from ICMR Bangalore. She is presiding officer for internal committee under prevention of sexual harassment at workplace. Her focus and purpose and interest is to support and help women employees, subordinates for their career growth and leadership roles. Over to Dr. Parul Malhotra, please. Shivang. Thank you, sir. Yeah, slides are already there. Thank you, sir, and very good evening and happy new year to all. So when Dr. Rajiv Kumar Jain told me to, you know, if you want to present something, I was thinking that there are uh, so many experts in occupational health to, you know, uh, share their expertise with us. What is more relatable to me is what I wanted to present. And then I discussed with my, again, my women group, so we all this is this is this is actually not my talk this is a representation of all the women occupational health physicians their opportunities and their challenges so i'm just presenting it this is uh, the voice of group basically uh, shivang can we uh, go to the next slide Yes, the women uh, actually have been treated as second-class citizens since time immemorial. Uh, patriarchal norms in a male-dominated society have dedicated, dictated the do's and don'ts to women in every aspect of their lives, from conducting themselves in public to choices of reproduction. The public sphere has always been seen as a male domain with limited number of women venturing out to uh, test the treacherous water of the workplace. This, however, is gradually changing as since the past few decades, more and more women are joining the workforce and breaking the barriers that previously prevented them from getting employment into some, if not all the sectors. So this is, is what all about in, the, in my, my presentation. Next slide, please. Some facts. So in India, 70% of Indian men are part of work uh, workforce when considering person aged uh, 15 and above. However, only 22% of country's female population is at work. So you can see the difference. So I have taken this uh, from uh, MOSPI, Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. And across all the states, both in rural and urban areas, there are fewer women in workforce compared to men. Meghalaya is the only state where 50% of the female population is at work and Bihar is the least, 4% only. Uh, next slide, please. Second major thing is gender pay gap. Uh, as you can see here, the men in salaried employment was, average earning of men in salaried employment was 17, near about 17,000 uh, per month. And uh, when it comes to female, it is 13,000, 13,000. And uh, surprisingly, uh, in Uttar Pradesh, it is kind of 20,000, so a little better. So these are a few facts about the employment and the gender pay gap. Next slide. Okay, this is, I have taken the statistics from our group. Uh, we have a group, uh, CME group. 
uh, in that there are total uh, i mean out of 189 there are 152 male uh, occupational health physicians and 37 women and then i have taken from Mysore, we have a, a Mysore group where we all industrial doctors are there. In that out of 22, we are only five and uh, 17 are male doctors. When I joined industry eight years back, I think we were only two, me and Dr. Bharti. So th th this is the you know uh, uh, gap uh, uh, in this. Uh, when I joined AFIH, uh, we were 25 students and several, only seven female doctors. Next slide. Yes, I, uh, this is very important. I wanted to share some reviews from my women occupational health physicians. One of our uh, female doctor working at reputed industry, she told about her challenges and generally challenges faced by women. Women who are married but not completed family, not had children, are not opted against male doctors. Women doctors are not preferred in many manufacturing sites. Uh, they're not preferred whenever travel is more. Women medical officers are perceived as liability many times. I'll go into detail with my coming slides. Uh, next is a female doctor not preferred because they feel they cannot run around again the travel. They are avoided at evening parties when men have advantage of socializing with male managers. Next slide. Another one is lack of sexual harassment policies at workplace and they rec recruit less employees, whereas this is a, a, a major uh, responsibility of employer, but it in turn leads to less uh, women employment. Next is from predators to lack of toilets, which is responsibility of employer, but affects women employment. So these are a few reviews uh, from my fellow women OHPs. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, so these are the challenges. The top six challenges I have taken from one of the paper presented by Sampurna Datta in International Journal for Innovative Research in Multidisciplinary Field. These are the top uh, six uh, uh, problems or challenges which, you know, which women face at workplace. Gender pay gap is the topmost. Uh, in when it compares to uh, the male uh, uh, counterpart who is the equally qualified, equally experienced, women are getting less salary, lesser paid. Then the sexual harassment. Now uh, with changing times, definitely a uh, workplace is better and it is a legal compliance that every industry or every workplace, even school, colleges, everybody, they have to uh, either have in-house sexual harassment committee or they have to uh, tie up with it, uh, tie up with local uh, complaint committee. But this is a mandatory thing. But yes, this is a major hurdle in women employment. Uh, then inadequate sanitation facility, uh, facilities. For sure, uh, this is for males also. But yes, in times of crisis, it's not that important. Uh, for female, uh, you know, it, it, for females, it is very important to have a safe uh, sanitation we, uh, fa facilities. We now have, you know, one movie was also their toilet. So it is that important in uh, a female's, uh, you know, life and workplace for sure. Unsafe roads and transport. Again, uh, it comes under sexual harassment. There is a poor definition of what comes under workplace. So uh, if, if the workplace define uh, the definition of workplace properly, probably this problem can be solved. So uh, uh, the transportation and unsafe roads, again, they feel unsafe because of the sexual harassment. Then gender-based discrimination. Here comes the maternity leave, the period leave, uh, the, the, you know, they are mothers, so they will not be able to dedicate their time completely to their workplace. Uh, nobody tells that to, you know, comparatively, be, again, the patriarchy uh, plays a very important role that, you know, father has important role in that also, but it has never affected uh, employment, a uh, male employment, whereas gender based roles like, okay, this, this, she's unmarried, so for marriage, she will take leaves, or uh, she has not completed her family, so for maternity, she will take leave. So this is a very uh, important challenge, very, which, which every woman has faced at one point of time, including me. Then a poor work-life balance, again, mothers are, we being mothers or even daughters or as a family, we, we are being considered that we will 
not be able to balance between work and family we will you know uh, we will focus on family probably more she has children or you know she will she is a mother she needs uh, she needs to uh, dedicate her time more there should she, she will not be as sincere as a male uh, counterpart at workplace so these are general now as an occupational health physician in addition to above there is a notion in our uh, fraternity that all women doctors are gynecologists lady doctor means she will take care of the female uh, patients only this is a major challenge that if there is a manufacturing unit which uh, includes more manpower there are more men there we are not being considered whereas medical science or our graduation mbbs they have not differentiated we have how much men or male uh, uh, students male doctors have learned about uh, uh, gynec department or we, they have also had maternity postings we also have learned about other things but this is a major thing in our society probably so she is a female doctor she will not be take uh, she will not be able to take care of other uh, opds so women uh, ohps are not considered at manufacturing industry with more man uh, uh, more uh, men again that because she is a female there are two aspects one the male uh, problems medical problems she will not be able to uh, attend or uh, they will not be able to uh, you know tell her openly secondly the safety safety again is an employer's responsibility whether it is a female doctor or any other uh, you know in production plant or anything any other women working under the premises it is an employer's responsibility just because of gender Uh, you are not supposed to differentiate that whether there there are there are five thousand uh, men working inside. So you know, you a female doctor is not uh, you not be able to handle this. Another thing is again the medical science has not differentiated. We have learned everything. We know how to examine. We know how to uh, you know make our male patients also comfortable or they tell about their problems. So it's it's just uh, you know uh, if the opportunity is given, it's just a mental block, I guess. so no leadership quality or assertiveness uh women uh generally are considered more emotional so you know they feel that you know they 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 may not be uh, uh very firmly express or lead is another notion either they will be more aggressive or they will be intimidated so that is again one of the thing which uh, is a challenge for a occupational health physician too emotional so will not be able to handle union issues aptly this is a major thing which i also handled when i joined but slowly yes uh, it was uh, uh, my industry they came to know my fellow doctor they came to know my management that she can handle initially it was a problem because most of the union people they are again men sometimes they will be aggressive sometimes there are tricky things to handle which generally again they consider that probably women doctors they are not able to handle that they will not be able to handle that appropriately they will not attend night calls this is again one thing uh, employees patients management they also feel hesitant that you know if we will call her at night or you know probably she will not be liking it that you know night calls if any emergencies there this is a again a mindset a mental block whereas we had seen in covid times uh people who are on cme group they have seen dr shanti working uh, middle of the night at 3:30 4 am arranging beds so it's again a mental block it's not that we cannot do it or not we are not willing to do it when medical science has not differentiate when our graduation our system of you know teaching us has not differentiated whether uh, women should do a night duty or not so this this should not be a criteria actually but these are for sure challenges which we face next slide thank you with all these environmental factors you know what we have seen since childhood in our colleges to our workplace there come some internal challenges with this continuous conditioning what i would say that you know continuously people or the environment will prove certain things that you will not be able to do some things so there are some internal challenges which we face for example lack of confidence because of of course these internal uh, factors and our own conditioning pleasing attitude overdoing things to prove ourselves again 
because there is a constant question mark whether she will be able to do it or not so we women end up doing overdoing it so you know i will i i will show it that i can do it and we will uh, end up uh, end up overdoing it to just prove ourselves which is not required we just need to do what is required not overdoing it then inability to communicate and feeling in intimidated again because of so many external factors and you know a constant hammering of certain things that you are not able to do it we somewhere lack uh, uh, you know ability to communicate and of course feel intimidated by your male counterparts or your employees or the men around uh, so this is one of the thing again the lack of confidence in social media interaction with changing times especially covid again a uh, safe place whether we are safe coming on social media uh, for example this zoom meeting or on whatsapp whatsapp groups uh, so many people one of our ohp was telling that so many women they will not even put their dp you know because they feel safe there is uh, somewhere they they feel they feel restricted they feel restrained and now for the last 2 years you cannot you cannot come up without social media or without getting yourself uh, active or making yourself active on digital media this is one thing less women role models this is again uh, we are so many women working uh, you know as ohps and uh, uh, other other uh, leadership roles also but they are not in limelight they are not even taking their place and uh, you know coming up probably again because they are less in numbers so we you know we we, we should have role models so that we can look up to them and come up there are so many so many females like dr sudha ramchandra and uh, dr shashikala chandrashekhar who is president of koh or dr deepa khs president uh, koh uh, but they are very lesser i mean handful of people i can just name five or six but there are men there are so many leaders we can look up to then lack of mentorship we we are women but they uh, we have women at uh, you know higher leadership roles but we don't know how to approach them and uh, somewhere there is a gap that you know uh, between the mentor and the mentee probably we don't know how to approach and uh, they are somewhere lacking of you know uh, taking a role uh, like a mentorship uh, role that you know okay i need to mentor this particular female a woman for a woman kind of concept that okay i am at this higher level so i should groom women under me so there is lack of that mentorship also uh, next slide yes so we have uh, seen the challenges what we face now uh, how to deal with it sheryl standberg she, she is ceo of uh, facebook uh, most of you must be knowing her uh, there is a book that is uh, you know bible for uh, working women actually uh, lean in uh, every women working women should go through that book she says so please ask yourself what i would do if i weren't afraid and then go do it this is the thing we should follow we should always think before doing you know anything any challenge there are few points i want to just highlight update yourself knowledge gives us uh, gives us confidence uh, not just in our subject for sure uh, constant updation attending cmes like we are doing if you are updated that definitely will give you confidence and you know can you will stand apart not just in our field you as an ohp should have uh, updation about other things also uh, you know of course environment health and safety we do but hr related things legalities you know so that you can you can attend meetings you you can you can uh, li uh, literally uh, make your place there so any day updation update yourself regularly will uh, give you confidence know your rights when what and how to ask here comes the maternity leave the sexual harassment committee uh, you should definitely know that what you are supposed to ask and not keep quiet there are so many women they don't go for complete maternity leave thinking that they will be lacking behind their you know uh, uh, promotions or at their workplace so you should really know your rights uh, that what are my rights as uh, as an employee at that one particular organization and be vocal about it it's your right and you have to be vocal about it choose your workplace very wisely uh, uh, because of these things 
because if you don't have uh, uh, some uh, rules and regulations like this maternity leave or the sexual harassment policies at work there there must there has to be there will be so many hurdles prob uh, probably or if you are already in a workplace where these things are not in place these are your rights please google search about your rights as a women uh, you know employer a simple google search will tell you and please be vocal about it nobody no, nobody can you know literally suppress you for that know yourself know your strengths and weakness hold on to your strengths and work on your weakness these are this is related to those internal challenges there is a proper system of knowing yourself uh, there are many drivers there are proper scales of measurements where you can know what kind of personality you are whether you are a dominant uh, personality or you compromise uh, or you you know uh, you are a very uh, what do you call it perfectionist so there there are proper uh, scales where where you can you know i can share it i have with me where you can really know what kind of personality you are and then can strengthen your weakness and can hold on to your strengths do not underdo or overdo things this i have told already sometimes we only to you know uh, prove ourselves that i can do it we overdo things so you cannot keep everyone happy my mentor told me one thing that given enough move on there the demo given enough and move on you just need to literally follow this mark your place take your place and don't undermine yourself i'll give you an example even in meetings if there are 15 men and there are two women in a department we tend to sit behind in a meeting don't do that please make your place sit in front it's okay if you are less otherwise if you will not give importance to yourself if you will not make your own place nobody will give you that place and own it uh, this used to happen with me whenever uh, anyone used to praise me oh this, this, you you spoke very well or you are looking good i used to suddenly explain it no no this is this or you have done some work very uh, nicely i used to tell no no this is team work that fellow did that fellow helped me that's not it's your work you have done it own it what do you expect from your career this is very important always before choosing a career as an ohp especially please know what do you expect are you expecting a safe secure work environment secure basically that okay this is a permanent job uh, so it's okay if salary is less uh, like that or if you are looking for a you know kick uh, a good work you want to do a very good work a professional satisfaction or um, you know uh, there are so many things uh, like that or you want to uh, you know just take experience at that workplace so no things note down these things what are you expecting from this particular job or any job whenever you opt for work on your better communication skills assertiveness is so important for women and this is not an inborn skill you can learn it there is a system for it you can definitely learn it how to be assertive not go very aggressive not be very submissive a balanced way of communicating things communication skills are a very much learner you know you, you can learn it it's a learned skill it's you you don't you don't uh, you know know it or you don't have it right from the beginning so there is again a system to it i'll uh, tell later work on your conflict management skill again do i negotiate more or am i dominating more which is creating problem at my workplace or i give in it's okay what others say uh, you really need to know about uh, these skills and you know work towards it again there is a system be a part of your team that is very important take your women uh, tribe with you uh, alone we definitely cannot uh, i would not say fight it we cannot make it so be with your tribe and as an ohp your occupational health center team be a part of your team you cannot work alone so be considerate be empathetic which are your qualities basically do that be a strong member of your tribe i told define your goals again personal and professional what do i want to do next one year then five year and then again next five years whether you will be able to do it or not that's a secondary thing but you should be having this written somewhere that this is my goal for 2022 professionally and personally this is where i see myself there can be challenges for example i'll tell you i 
I when I opted in 2019, I I started doing family medicine, and in January 2022, I I diagnosed I got diagnosed with cervical cancer stage one. So yes, there will be hurdles. I got operated. Uh, I underwent radiation. Everything was fine. I was depressed for a time. It was a shock. Till June 2020, I was kind of handling this. After 2020, I got back to my goals. You know, nothing should stop you. There can be tough things, and you are strong. Right. So define your goals so that when you fall also and when you get back to your things, you know, looking at those goals, you can again get back to your normal self, your normal growth. Choose your workplace wisely, I told. And definitely there is a system to do all these things. Next slide. Next slide, please. Yes. Choose an appropriate leadership program or mentor. I would like to introduce a partner, Devagiri, who is a mentor for me. Uh, she has a book, the Professional uh, Women's Handbook. How I was introduced with her, this is not my, uh, you know, personal uh, uh, interaction with her was not started just like that. My workplace, that is why I say choose your workplace very wisely. And if you are at a workplace, please make them understand that programs like this are very important. Leadership programs for women, especially. I work for TVS Motors and that, that is such a wonderful company that we are now, uh, our goal for next two years is to increase women, uh, 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 you know, uh, manpower, women power there and uh, help uh, women leaders in higher leadership roles. So there is a system to do everything. And if your workplace is, uh, you know, it hand in hand with you to uh, you know help you in uh, grow further that is nothing like that you can buy her book on amazon this is a very good book and Cheryl standberg don't forget it lean in that is the these books are mantra and there are very less female mentors and leaders of course to look up to there globally there are so many mentors and leaders aparna is one of them so yeah and she's very approachable you can definitely approach her next slide Yes, uh, so we uh, talked about uh, opportunity, uh, sorry, challenges, and then how to deal with it. Now, let, let, feel, let, let us have a feel good factor about ourselves. Quality is a women a OHP because people who are attending this um, can also know uh, as a woman, what, what makes you a little different? I will not say you know, a little better than men folks, no. A little different is empathy better balancing capacity women generally are considered very sensitive and empathetic which uh, is you know quoted as a negative uh, thing but it is not because we are empathetic as a doctor it is very important and for sure because of that we balance mental strength from uh, you know uh, from our um, what do you call childbirth to everything uh, women uh, generally have a little uh, you know, better mental strength, which again is a quality as an occupational health physician. Again, wanting a secure job, we generally do not, we, uh, women are, as a personality, they want a secure job. If we, we are, you know, secure at a job and we are having a good work, respected, well appreciated, we won't change easily. So there is, there are chances of long-term employment. I am working when I joined TVS, actually, uh, you know, people were asking me whether you will stick to that. I'm working there for the last eight years and I'm for short, I'm not planning to change anytime soon. So there is a longer, uh, you know, chance, long-term employment chances. Sincerity, even not just as OHP, even women are otherwise considered as very sincere. Again, that pleasing that, you know, I want to do this, I want to prove this. If that is taken positively, it turns into sincerity. So yes, we are sincere. More enthusiastic to create significant place at work. That in turn will definitely be a positive thing for employer because we are working on ourselves we are trying to make our place so we definitely do a better job we will definitely do a good job so that will finally benefit the employer so uh, the, the the last three lines are for women doctors why you should you why you should choose uh, occupational health or work at industries you are not just a doctor there you are a manager you learn so many things. You are, you know, not limited to just one speciality. And you're not limited to being a doctor itself. I did my MBA uh, while working at TVS. 
i am sure before you know uh, if when i before tvs i would not be able to do my mba that properly because there are different departments what you learn finance department how to make balance sheet what is inventory management as a doctor as a clinician i am a clinical cardiologist i would have never learned it practically i really i literally you know used to go and sit with my finance department people that how do you do it so there is a practical approach practical learning not just as a doctor but other other managerial skills too and again there is flexibility of timings and there is a fixed schedule also whichever company you are working in accordingly so these are few opportunities so more and more women should come women doctors should come and work in industries next slide yes i would like to end my presentation with this a truly equal world would be one where women ran half our countries and companies and men ran half our homes so probably then we will have balance we are not here to take anybody's place where we are definitely here to take to make our own place thank you thank you dr parul for uh, nicely thank you thank you sir celebrating the subject uh, i'll request dr sham pingle to talk about he has requested to talk about the subject a little bit dr pingle yes please thank you thank you so much actually i don't want to talk about the subject but uh, i would like to compliment uh, dr palul malhotra for an excellent presentation uh, more thank than you, the sir. content of the presentation which was of course outstanding what i appreciate more is is her passion with which she was speaking correct thank you, you sir passion has to come from within it cannot be given by someone else that has to come from you so excellent and uh, since this is a topic which is very close to my heart and my experience i would just like to share a, only for a minute uh, a few things i have been in industry for almost 35 40 years now and uh, i have had women who i have recruited in my team and they have worked very well i have never found any woman Uh, to be less than any other man, as far as occupational health physicians were concerned. In fact, I found them to be more sincere and and they bluff much less. If they don't know, if they are not done something, they say this has not been done, but they would not bluff. So to that extent, I definitely uh, de depended more on them. Uh, when uh, I joined IBM ten years ago, in two thousand twelve. my boss was an australian woman my india head in ibm was a woman 2012 i am talking about and my global head was a woman and uh, the organization did very well ibm you all know how it is doing so i i, I don't think that's any hindrance as far as occupational health is concerned yes we are and we do very actively scout for good female occupational health physicians and we would also like to give them more opportunities many more opportunities you would have seen that whenever there was an opportunity to go off someone on central council we preferred a woman if it is if she is available and then because women physicians are less that's why there is a constraint now we are bidding for ico in ico we have five women as working committee members or bid committee members while bidding for ico you will see their names very prominently and uh, of course they have all contributed very well and they are contributing so uh, we really appreciate that and well my wife is also a, uh, i mean she is not an industrial physician but she has worked in industry for some time so i have soft corner for females and my daughter in law also works in a good industry and she is doing a good job so i definitely have lot of uh, affection and interest in women occupational health physicians may your drive increase thank you so much thank you thank sir you, thanks Dr. a lot thank, thank you, you sir and, uh, i don't have a question for you nor do i have advice for you you have put it very well i only have appreciation thank you sir uh, for dr jain i have sir. a very short question dr jain in your opinion uh out of the current new cases that are coming up in india what percentage would be uh, omicron well, it's a di very difficult uh, no, that's why i said to accurately yes. estimate 
but yeah. current evidence is showing uh, around 30 to 40 percent cases are of Omicron. Uh, this is a proportion of cases reported for genomic analysis, but there is a bias in that data because most of the cases are, are from international travelers as well, where likelihood of Omicron is higher. So if you take a lower uh, estimate, say uh, 20 to 30 percent would be a fair estimate. That is the current uh, evidence, but uh, the current testing strategy, RT-PCR, where dual testing is available, that also is showing less than 20% are Omicron. That means S gene is absent. That is the current epidemiological evidence from India, mainly concentrated from metro cities. So there is a bias because we do not have that, that test for even for RT-PCR, that S gene is not uh, you know, detectable uh, in all the RT-PCR tests that is available. Now, there is a reason why I asked this question, Dr. Jain, and that is uh, the cases uh, before Omicron came on the scene, the COVID cases were on a declining train. And uh, they were quite stable for quite some time. I mean, as you yourself have been uh, giving in your uh, weekly updates. And there was no reason for a sudden increase in COVID cases otherwise. I mean, some variation, of course, is there. But that kind of events or reasons were not seen in November, December, early December or November. So this increase in COVID cases has become sort of, it has come at the same time as Omicron. Therefore, I was doubting whether maybe 75 to 80% contribution is from Omicron. Or the, not. the current evidence, actually, uh, if you see the, the UK data and the US data, it's the combination of Delta and Omicron which causes the highest uh, increase. In, if you recollect what uh, Chief Scientist WHO was talking, the vaccine effectiveness goes away. The breakthrough infections constitute a substantial portion. Because in India, if you see the vaccination started sometime in January. So now many people who would have been even vaccinated, some say in March, April, they are now vulnerable for infection. So combination of a breakthrough infections and Omicron, but saying Omicron only will cause this? No, it won't. A combination of Delta and Omicron will cause, and all the data from other countries, whether in South Africa, UK, Denmark, and USA, shows that the curve of the pandemic of the rise will be much sharper if it is a combination. If it is alone Omicron, it would not be that sharp. So the population which is uh, vulnerable, population which was fully vaccinated, but now have reduced uh, in terms of their antibodies level, will show this kind of trend, which is now visible in most of the metropolitan cities. That is the reason that Indian government decided that booster, jo uh, booster jabs should be given to vulnerable people, mainly 60 years plus with comorbidities and healthcare and uh, frontline workers. That is the right way of scientifically deciding. Of course, mm -hmm. hospitalization okay. and uh, infections in terms of their death rates will be lower if people are fully vaccinated. Thank you. One last thing. Yeah. Um, what uh, we all know about breakthrough infections and Omicron uh, having a uh, upper hand there in breakthrough infections and all. But uh, what, as of now, what do we see as reinfection cases of COVID? Reinfections, of course, will occur. And that's uh, as of now, at the ground level. Uh, the data is not available uh, as per uh, the, avail the sources that I have with an ICMR. The studies are going to going on to estimate the reinfection figures because data needs to be co collated between vaccinations and COVID uh, portal, which uh, tracks the RT PCR and uh, rapid antigen test. This data needs to be, you know, triangulated. The so ICMR is at the presently uh, present time in the job to collate these two databases that they have. The data is of course available. Where the vaccination be, uh, comment knows. No, 
Who are no, sir. My question is not about vaccination. My question is about reinfection. Vaccination, we all know breakthrough cases. Will be no, but reinfection is people because the data is already available of infection. The person yes. who is reinfected is also trackable fully on the COVID portal. The government is now triangulating that in terms of geographical spread. In yes. The data will be put in public domain sometime in uh, third week of January. Okay. That is the that current will be very interesting. Yes, of course. India, ICMR is on the job on this. ICMR with NHA is on the job at the moment for this specific uh, issue that you've raised. Very important issue, actually. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for your presentation today and also for uh, discussing and Welcome. Welcome all this. Thank you. Dr. Jain. Dr. Yeah. Pavan has asked, is there any existing treatment which is working on Omicron? Well, we should understand uh, the virus has not changed. As far as clinical protocol is concerned, and last slide has shown about the WHO uh, observation, the clinical protocol shall remain the same. So we should not worry about effectiveness of clinical protocol at the moment by government of India or WHO, there is no need to change at the current, uh, currently available evidence. That will be my take on that. Yes, Dr. Kamla Fartial, you want to ask something? Um, very happy new year to everyone. Um, I would just like to thank Dr. Jain for a wonderful presentation. And of course, to Dr. Parul also for a wonderful presentation which was very different from the ones which we usually hear. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Thyagraju. Uh, good evening, uh, Madam Parul. It is a most wonderful and uh, scientific meeting. The ones update yourself, know yourself, Define your goals, choose your words wisely. Your, your voice is echoing. Your, right. your voice is echoing. Uh, difficult to understand. Uh, so Maybe you have two logins. If you got, uh, yeah, two connections, then probably. It... <coughs> I think this uh, there is a problem of the connectivity or something. You're on mute, sir. You're on mute. Uh, yes, okay. now, yes, now you yes. cannot. Okay. Yes. Uh, Madam Parul, uh, it's uh, one of the best lectures which I've heard uh, recently <laughs> regarding the occupation health. Uh, congratulations. And, uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, uh, the, usually, this is um, the, the woman role is uh, less uh, because of uh, this country was ruled by Mughals uh, from Babur to Aurangzeb and also ruled by British. And the next most thing is in Hindu, this Pati Devo Bhava is there. So usually um, uh, females uh, or ladies will be um, uh, compared to the male, it is been less occupied. Uh, the second thing is uh, you have raised very good uh, uh, this one, update yourself and know yourself, define your goals. These are the best uh, parameters for uh, any working woman or working men uh, to do the best in their uh, uh, workplace. And to coming back to uh, Bangalore, I think where I worked in for 32 years in Karnataka, we had five CMOs, that is all lady medical officers, and only uh, three male medical officers, that is uh, three CMOs. Uh, yeah, our uh, last one was our uh, Srinivas. Uh, and just to start with Dr. Shankar, Dr. Shiva, Dr. and we had a number of five uh, lady medical officers. Even in HL, where you have mentioned about Deepa, there were a uh, lot of uh, female medical, op uh, medical officers who were uh, eating the hospitals. Uh, so I think uh, one has to come back and uh, one has to be more uh, knowledgeable, more. Uh, they should uh, be uh, straightforward, they should listen, they should present papers, they should be academically, they should be very good. 
then only they can come up because uh, equal gender means when we ask uh, uh, there will not be any grace for anybody because the arabs wanted more uh, number of uh, people to be um, I mean they uh, today we all think of uh, profit you see i am uh, now practicing i see more number of medical officers more number of female medical uh, representatives also i see male medical are this one also they are all uh, working even i have seen uh, uh, female uh, medical representative lady medical representative coming around 10 o'clock and uh, waiting till then then i ask madam why you are waiting uh, here at 10 o'clock you could have told me 8 o'clock and uh, i would have written your uh, company sir this one they are from prime companies even uh, sun company abort company alchem company and uh, corona men one of the most branded companies the uh, female medical officers are waiting near uh, nearly 8 o'clock 10 o'clock uh, in clinics so uh, today uh, there is this one but only thing my suggestion to my this one to lady medical officers are uh, be bold be academic and uh, as much as possible try to uh, attend this kind of uh, webinars clinics i think we have to congratulate delhi because uh, we, uh, they have done a such a wonderful we all learned lot from uh, this uh, yeah, this one and uh, to tell you honestly last week i was in uh, goa i uh, had a ticket but the ticket uh, if i cancel no there was a no uh, amount so what i did is i postponed the, to the next day and attended dr uh, rajiv kumar jain meeting because i wanted to listen to him about obikra because you read any books you go through the google but you will not get so much knowledgeable as our dr rajiv kumar jain says uh, really it's a wonderful madam you are also highly congratulations to you you have done a wonderful uh, uh, lecture and uh, thanks for uh, this one we will take home lot of things thank you very much madam thank, thank you. you thank you sir thank you, i would like to add uh, only two things here that uh women are ready to even stretch themselves uh like i mentioned in my uh, presentation also the thing is uh, our rights of having a safe workplace plays a very important role which is an uh, which is employer's responsibility i would like to give examples of my own company tvs motors when i was doing afih it was five days a week weekend i used to come back to mysore i am from mysore i was doing it in icm or bangalore i had a small daughter you won't believe every weekend my company has arranged a taxi for me to come back home and monday morning to take me back again to icmr safely alone not a company with anybody like that you know i have to travel on bus or trains so you know that gives you an enthusiasm to read to learn more and to provide back to the organization of course so that 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 is how you know companies should create loyalty also so yeah i agree with you dr parul uh, and i also think um, one needs to be um, one needs to show that uh, you are doing your work you know sincerely and um, with that uh, then of course you have to go one step ahead as you had said sure. that when you are working with male colleagues you have to show that the, you are also working in the same league there are so many sacrifices sure. you have to do and uh, you have to uh, uh, do away with lot of small small things so that you are able to give your full uh, to the organization and to your role to which you sure, work sure. so i sure. think uh, that is uh, most important and at the same time when the organization gives you all the support then you are able to give it very well true it's a fine balance yes compliments to dr parul for having so much of the subject topic knowledge so you are on mute sir rajiv dr rajiv you are on mute sir. Yeah. i have two questions for dr parul uh, besides uh, compliments to a unique uh, perspective that you have given which makes uh, the whole world view complete actually the questions relate to uh, tvs motors the board of directors of tvs motors at the moment has got chairman son as well as daughter so what is yes chemistry in the meeting of board of directors how much 
freedom is given to Dr. Lakshmi Venu in Sir, yeah. his moon. It is, it is very well defined actually in terms of the, the TVS is a group of companies. So it is very well defined, you know, this particular part of the company will be taken uh, care by uh, 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 um, Dr. Lakshmi and this will be taken care by uh, Mr. Sudarshan it is very, very well defined. They don't interfere in each other's thing and they are pioneer in their fields. Uh, like uh, in Mysore plant, the adjoining company is um, the, the building adjoining to our TVS motors. That is that comes under Dr. Lakshmi. So we we definitely help each other, but decision making is completely theirs. So it is very well balanced, and probably that only is reflecting uh, further down in the way they are uh, uh, taking uh, their female employment and increasing the manpower and giving us upper hand and all that. So probably that is the uh, culture or that is what they believe in, which they are uh, doing with other employees also. They're, they're definitely setting example in that. All right. The second question relates to that you, your childhood and your uh, you know, formative years were in North India. And now you are, yes. you've been for a reasonably long period of time in South India. How do you see gender diversity or gender inclusion policies being uh, actually uh, implemented in the society and especially at the workplace? So, um, I am highly privileged that I am a doctor. You know, there are so many things which are, uh, which are not, which will not come in scene at all because I am a well-read doctor. So it doesn't make much of a difference when it comes to medical field compared to North India and South India. Equal opportunities are there. I was very well accepted in South India because I learned the language. I accepted the food. Most of the people, they didn't even know that I'm from North India when I joined TVS Motors because before that I was working in hospitals, learned Kannada. So later on, they, they, thought, they thought that I'm from Mangalore Belt. So I look like this. I'm from Mangalore Belt. But later on, they came to know that I'm from Delhi. So very well accepted. There is a difference in other, other fraternity, other field for sure. For sure. That there are there are some states in northern part of India as well. There are some states in southern part of India also where the women employment is less and still needs focus. But Karnataka as whole, uh, I think they are doing a very. It is a very, uh, you know, what do you call welcoming state, very welcoming state. Like Delhi, Delhi is very welcoming state. It welcomes everyone. <laughs> Similarly, Karnataka, Bangalore, they are very welcoming. So, but yes, there are some pros and cons. There are some negatives in southern part of India and some positives. Similarly, there are some positives in Delhi, in the northern part of India and some negatives. So, plus, I feel, I mean, I don't want to, you know, sound like a racist or something, but southern part of India is uh, milder than our, uh, our part of India. Yes. They are uh, very, I mean, very welcoming, very warm. So, so I'm very well adjusted because of that probably. Wonderful. I would uh, urge upon you to spread uh, the thought process that you have presented today to a wider audience. That because it, it throws a new light into what, how actually India is changing. True. So keep it up. Thank you, sir. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. I mean, uh, last session I moderated and you told that if I can present, thank you for giving me this wonderful yeah. opportunity. Always thank you. Thank you. Thank you for group to the group who has participated. Rajiv Jan, Rajiv Jan has given a lot of information. Parul has also contributed a lot. I'll request Shivang. Shivang, should we now end the session? Yes, surely, Dr. Ma, uh, Dr. Saxena. You have conducted uh, this session very well. I must compliment you. This is a debut moderation that you've started on the DG Connect webinar. Uh, wonderful to have you as our moderator for today's session at very short notice. Actually, Dr. Kumaran, who was supposed to be uh, conducting this session today, he met with an accident yesterday. Ooh. And uh, because of the heavy rains in Chennai, he was to be conducting this uh, session. He could not because of his ill health. So I requested you to moderate the session today and you very graciously accepted this. Uh, I'm grateful for that. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, bye-bye.